43 games over 500. Boston's all-time greatest offense amidst seamlessly getting it done despite missing three pieces to their main core on consecutive nights we're going to evaluate in this video. According to YouTube though, just 11.7% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe to this channel to support my content if you haven't already. Also splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, thank you. Before their game in Chi-Town, in Detroit, Boston was without Tatum, the injured with a sprained shoulder holiday, along with Horford. They still put up a seamless beatdown on the Pistons for a second time in less than a week though, a win that featured Boston tying an NBA record with a 27 point win. Boston tied the 2015-16 San Antonio Spurs and both the 1970-71 and 1971-72 Milwaukee Bucks for the most 25-plus point victories in a season of all time. In his fourth year as a pro, Oregon alum Peyton Pritchard setting career highs in all of points, rebounds, and assists per game, plus three-point and field goal percentage. Over his last five games, the just-turned 26-year-old who was one of Danny Ainge's final picks as Celtic president is posting 18 points and eight assists per game, while averaging over seven attempted threes each outing and draining nearly 49% of them. Over this five-game span where the Celtics have built upon an ongoing win streak that's now at nine, Pritchard leads Boston in plus-minus, and it's not even close. Let's go from the numbers to the eye test, where elusively quick-twitched moving jab cross tween combos like this one when isolating Gallo display Pritchard's in the midst of breaking out into someone who can change the trajectory of playoff games for a number one seed. In the film from Boston's first of a doubleheader versus Detroit, watch how after utilizing this Tillman screen, Peyton's able to seamlessly pull up in the face of two piston defenders desperately closing out on his jumper. Missoula draws up what initially looks like a Chicago action, but instead it's KP faking the dribble handoff while Jalen cuts around him and finding Brown with an agile wraparound through traffic to the paint, setting up Jalen for a lefty finish. An SOB features Brissett and Cornette positioning themselves to set Sam Hauser a staggered screen. However, this only acts as bait to get Jalen Brown a clear lane on the weak side, and executing the action is a tremendous looping entry pass from Peyton, along with a forceful reception plus finish from Brown. Brown's averaging 31 points over his last seven games, but don't forget about Jalen's defensive impact, trailing Cunningham after Metu screens him with a pin down, anticipating the wide angle of Roden's swing pass, puts Brown in position to blitz the passing lane for one of four stolen cookies on the evening. With the game clock winding down in the first, eyeing the paint with a full head of steam, plus a slight offhanded in and out, Bates rode in into guessing drive to the basket. Fournier is still right there, but elite jump shooting elevation, clear Peyton of Evans contest as he knocks it home. This dicey Celtics playset features White faking a flare screen for Hauser, and Hauser relocating to receive a handoff and on-ball screen from Cornette, which opens up a Sam triple. Very nice action. With Mihailuk stepping into the rotation, this play sees Svi patiently await for an empty side Porzingis down screen to open up Brown, who gets it done on the catch, and it's a dime for all of Ukraine. On this white Porzingis pick and pop, you can tell the Pistons seem unaware of whether or not to be switching. That's one thing, but this is just an unacceptable closeout from Cunningham, who for some reason doesn't desperately rotate out to the rangy Porzingis. Easy cash. Denying the Chris Dapp screen, Derek then whirls into the lane where he kicks it out to Jalen, who goes to work on Kate with a momentum cross left and finish through Cunningham with that offhand. Crypto P is then similarly able to body through a piston defender, as watch him out muscle and fend off veteran wing Troy Brown Jr. A double screen for D White unfastens a lane for O'Shea Brissett to find his way to the cup as the roller, and Derek calmly locates him. Two-man game with White and Brown leads to White DHOing to Brown, who flows into a spot up to drain it despite a pesky Brown Jr. contest. Saucing up of the night took place when Brown puts Ivy on an island with a quadruple tween behind combo chained to a step back. The next night, Boston had a Horford and Tatum back, but this time we're missing Brown along with Porzingis due to load management and still Holiday with his shoulder sprain. Although Drew did warm up in Chicago, which is a good sign, there's still no timetable for Drew's return. Effectively filling in for Porzingis up front, Luke Cornett's 13 rebounds consisted of five offensive boards. One of those O boards was after this Horford miss where Luke snags it surrounded by three Chicago defenders, and while falling out of bounds, he kicks it to White, who proceeds to drive and lob it right back to Cornett. 
On the catch, Tatum's going to hit Dosumu with an in and out into a momentum crossover to get the first step. Ayo recovers to stay on his hip, but Tatum's size advantage powers him through while he gets to his left through traffic for a tough and one. After Crypto P gets past Vucevic, watch how Peyton lures the help of DeRozan, trading fraudulent Crypto by faking a reverse layup with his body language and footwork, hanging in the air to further bait an attack, kicking it out to the wide open flamethrower and Hauser. Peyton Pritchard's out there looking like a crypto scammer. This is crazy. Some Tatum finesse to whirling Dervish into the lane is followed by straight force to back down Dosumu before powering through for the hoop. All right, Dr. Seuss. White's going to find Hauser as the trailer right here. And notice how Sam's utterly unfazed by Kobe White's decent closeout. That's a lethal marksman in Uncle Sam, showing you how he's making a career high by far 72.4% of his shots from zero to three feet away from the basket. The Bulldog and Pritchard get switched on to Craig, hits him with a nifty stop and go dribble to fly past Tori, who fouls Peyton on a desperate trail to make his quick twitch downhill ravaging an and one. Tatum and Horford's extended reps as teammates come in handy in a one possession game down the stretch. As a picture perfect pick and pop sees Tatum draw the trap and overhead pass to Horford, whose shooting mechanics outdo Vucevic's delayed recovery. Quelling Chi Town's late third quarter momentum, let's get back to the crypto discussion. As again isolating Craig, this time Pritchard drives to his left, stops short just inside the foul line, up fakes to get Tori flying by, and shiftily pivots deep into the paint. As they did with Tatum a couple plays ago, Chicago traps this pick and roll involving White. However, Derek just calmly drops it into Cornette, who draws a double and finds Brown in the dunker spot. That's just incredible IQ from your backup center. Cornette goes from showing you the smarts to the spring by setting the screen for White, who again gets trapped and fluidly finds Cornette, whose roll on the perfect angle runways a monstrous lob finish. How the Celtics picked up two shorthanded wins was impressive, and how they've been playing with top weapons in and out of the lineup all season speaks to how Joe Mazzulla and his incredible coaching staff system allows for multiple different groups of talent to thrive. You can see precisely why this is the greatest offense on paper ever with how organized Missoula's play calling is. The most unreal parts about the Celtics to me are their next man up mentality, their depth, and system interchangeability, which allowed them to replace Drew plus Tatum and Horford on one night, then Drew, Brown, and Porzingis on the other with Pritchard, Cornette, and Hauser. Brad Stevens developed one hell of a roster, man. There's a lot of ammo for you on this one, but what are the most unreal parts about the Celtics in your opinion. Best answer gets next video's comment or shout out while competing to be one of five in position to win either a free jersey or shoe of their choosing. Today's comment or shout out goes to Jeremiah G who says the biggest key for Golden State, getting TJD consistent pick and roll touches with Chris to keep Curry and Dre resting as long as possible. Great bit as always. Appreciate that Jeremiah and likewise a great take. Appreciate every answer. Thank you for watching. This was your boy D Flow, and I'll see you next video.